This is a pretty interesting BMW and not because of any of the typical BMW traits. Not because it looks smashing good in this shape and specifically also this color and also not because it drives reasonably well. It is interesting because of just one very very big aspect and that aspect is its price. At 70 lakh rupees, this is largely in the more affordable end of the luxury buying experience. And uh, yes, I know the times are bizarre. 70 lakh rupees is being called as affordable. But yes, that's how we have moved. So, as a package, what really is the i4 really like? And whether at 70 lakh rupees, it genuinely can become the default option for a lot of luxury buyers to go for this machine or not, is exactly what we are trying to find out. Now, when I said that the BMW i4 is interesting, I also elaborated a little bit on why it is so. But now is the time that we kind of dive into that aspect a little deeper. Now, look at the whole marketplace. 70 lakh rupees will get you, say, the E-Class, the 5 Series, a couple of Jaguars are also in the play. There's a Lexus that goes in that price bracket. But none of them are all electrics. So for BMW to price this, a proper full-blown sedan at 70 lakh rupees is genuinely a massive feat that the company has achieved. And what makes it interesting beyond the price for me at least is also the way this thing looks. And yes, we all know that the i4 is based on the regular 3 series platform. So to make it into an all electric car, there were several changes that BMW had to execute. On the outside, you will see the whole grille section, which has been a very big and controversial part of the design. It does actually look pretty okay with this car. It is all flush, so probably that whole gaping personality is gone and there is a more svelte look to it. And that I think just works a little bit better than massive grills giving you all the intake that you want. So that of course is something that kind of works. And uh, then when you look at the car in profile, it may not really have a lot of stuff going on, which actually makes it a pretty pleasant sight. But the moment you get towards the rear and look at this car in the rear three quarter sort of an angle, that is the most handsome angle for this car to be looked at. And uh, I think in terms of the balance of design, in terms of the stance it occupies on the road, it just looks very spot on. On the inside, things have really changed for the better. This whole massively big and curved screen that you get, it just dominates the cabin and uh, it genuinely works like a charm. It's very slick. It looks very smart. Yes, kind of looks like an afterthought again, but this is a way a lot of manufacturers are going, so can't really single out BMW in doing this. But this genuinely looks very sharp, very crisp. All the fonts are very nice. The resolution is really sharp, and the response on the touch is absolutely slick. It is one of the best systems that we have encountered so far, and uh, yeah, I think uh, the usability of the iDrive has always been very high. Now it looks and feels brilliant as well. The perceived cabin quality of BMWs is generally quite high. We have always complained about the very staid and very ordinary sort of a layout of the dashboard. This one, of course, has been worked on, but that apart, the rest of the cabin really feels very nice, very rich and properly put together, which is exactly the case over here as well. And the best part is the contrast, this camel colored upholstery contrasting with the dark and the grayish sort of a look at the top part of the dashboard. That really works very well. And you have a very beautiful wood finish that just separates the two elements. And that is again, something that adds a little bit more sophistication to the cabin. BMWs have always had brilliant driving positions and this one continues to impress. You sit nice and low, 
And the pedal position is such that your feet are absolutely in sync with them. They fall naturally in line and you get a very good hold on the steering wheel as well. But the steering wheel itself in this car feels a bit too big. Uh, we all have discussed this and we all feel that the rim size could have been just slightly smaller and uh, that would have just enhanced the experience a bit more which would have been a crucial, crucial measure to give you the sense of connectedness with the car. We deliberately drove this over some rough patches to see how unsettled it can become and whether you get that crashing sound when you reach the limit of the bump stop but it just performed without any issue and that is a very very high degree of engineering and BMW should be complimented for that. Continuing on the suspension, now talking about the compliance of it, it is a little softer than your typical BMW, specifically if you're comparing it against the car that this one is based on, which is a 3 Series. But this suspension setup is a lot softer. You feel it when you drive it and uh, you feel it even more when you're turning around corners. So you do feel a little bit of a load shift happening. Not that it's bad in any way. In fact, I really like cars which exhibit a little bit of load shift or body roll in regular motoring journalism speak because that just lets you feel connected to the car a lot more. It just gives you a bit more feedback and makes you realize what you need to do on the throttle or the steering wheel. So in terms of the compliance of the suspension, this one softer is actually not bad because it gives you amazing ride quality. Despite of driving on 19s, which are optional, this one as a stock car comes on 17 inches, which now you can imagine how good the suspension quality on that is going to be because you'll have a lot more sidewall compressing and uh, absorbing a lot more of those bumps or irregularities on the road. In terms of the powertrain, the i4 comes with an 83.9 kilowatt hour battery pack, uh, does about 340 PS or 335 horsepower and uh, 400 30 newton meter which is sufficient enough especially because this is only a single motor setup there is also a dual motor setup which is available internationally and i genuinely think that bmw will bring that into india as well sometime in the future because it just makes that much more sense to extend the nameplate to extend the appeal factor as well because that will have a lot better performance also higher range and it just adds a little bit more uh, pizzazz or oomph to the brand. Now, when you're talking about uh, an EV, it is imperative that you also talk about the charging. This one, thankfully, gets a thermal management system, so you can prime the battery up for a fast DC charge. It will bring up the temperature just right so that it can feed the electricity into the batteries, recharge the whole system at the most optimum level. Uh, which is also something that a few other luxury manufacturers have been giving in their cars. Now, the maximum DC charging support it can have is up to 205 kilowatt, which is plenty, to be honest. Now that you will find any infrastructure in India supporting that. And uh, the three-phase AC can go up to 11 kilowatts, so that's also pretty all right and reasonably acceptable. You also have regenerative braking with the i4, as is the case with a lot of other electric cars and uh, this one has multiple levels. The most aggressive level is the one that you will enjoy the most because that enables you a single pedal driving experience. So you get on the throttle, there is a little bit of a traffic coming in, get off the throttle and it starts braking and the rate at which it reduces speed is genuinely intoxicatingly addictive. And uh, I experienced it once and I've not shifted back to any other level. This maximum regen mode is what I'm driving this car in all the time. Now this i4 right now, uh, we have done just a couple of very fast performance runs and been generally pootling about to get a sense of what exactly this thing is all about. How does it behave like a regular car on regular roads in regular city traffic conditions? and uh, we are being shown 306 kilometers of range still to go 
with 71% of battery remaining. And BMW claims on the regular WLTP cycle, this will go between 490-odd kilometers to 590 kilometers. That is the operating range of this vehicle. So yes, there is a big margin that BMW has taken. And it's very crucial because you need to give that cushion of range to people because uh, range anxiety is still a big, big factor when it comes to electric cars right now. And based on our calculations with 70% battery remaining and 300 kilometers still to go as a range, it kind of fits very well with the WLTP claim figure. So yes, uh, expect about 500 kilometers. Uh, that should be good enough if you are in cruise mode. If you really want to go hell for leather, this will definitely still do above 400 kilometers on a single charge, which is plenty good. So the good thing about the BMW i4 is that it's pretty much a regular BMW. It is based on a very regular BMW 3 Series. So you get the practicality of a regular BMW 3 Series. You get the flaunt factor of this being an electric car and you saving the environment. And you get performance of instant torque. So you get on the throttle and it just goes. In terms of all that, it's great. But what makes this car a lot more special for me is the price. And yes, I know I'm repeating myself from the point where I started this whole package. At 70 lakh rupees, this one is tantalizingly good. And what an option to have in a segment that is littered with crossovers and sedans of all sorts. But just to be able to have an all-electric experience at 70 lakh rupees makes you know that a luxury car, an all-electric luxury car, something that is looking into the future, and a price point which is not obnoxious, is a reality right now. But the big deal breaker for me would be the ground clearance. And this is because the battery is mounted on the floor. This is not designed to be an electric car in the first place. There's an internal combustion car converted into an electric car. So you make compromises and one very, very big compromise that you have to live with is the ground clearance. And in India, you do need a decent amount of ground clearance. We have thankfully been driving on very straight roads without a lot of hindrances. But there was one place where we had to navigate a slight bit of a bump and it rubbed its belly. This is going to be tricky. We have roads littered with potholes and this one is going to be a little bit challenging in that sense. 